Hey Legionnaires and welcome back, we're here with some Rome 2 battles for you today and these ones in particular are very special because they are highlights from the Rome 2 tournament I hosted quite recently that has just come to an end. Um, those that are in the Discord would know that this uh, tournament has been going on. If you want to take part in future tournaments that I'm doing, then uh, do join the Discord. The link is down below in the description and you can come and join some tournaments. Get involved in some just some custom battles from some guys there. Or just chat and uh, interact with some uh, guys that just really enjoy Total War. Um, everyone is welcome and uh, it's always great to have some more Legionnaires uh, join and come along for a chat. But anyway, we'll get into this, uh, into the battle. And uh, this is the first of four battles I'm showing off today. I'm trying to show off as many uh, battles that are like excellent and uh, have as many people, like different people in them. Um, just to show like... Um, like off different people's tactics and just to like showcase and give each, everyone else a little shout out almost. Um, but yeah, so this first one is uh, between Nabatea and Egypt. I'm told this one is, uh, well, this one is very close. I, I've i watched it um, myself. I don't need to tell them or be told. Um, but yeah, so we've got camel archers starting out on the flank over here. Uh, facing off some Egyptian camel archers. It'll be the battle between the camel archers to see who has the strongest camels in the desert. Uh, and, well, we're not fighting in the desert, as you can see. We're just fighting on a nice, plain flatland to make it nice and even. We have, uh, I mean, camel archers for Nabatea outnumbered the camel archers for Egypt, so they may have that uh, advantage in the skirmish. But, I mean, they've got some for Ptolemaic cav, some really strong shock cav. Though, I mean, Nabatea has his own uh, Hellenic cataphracts as well, and he has his general over here and some chariots. So, I mean, this is going to be a very interesting cavalry fight uh, to start off. I mean, it looks like... Nabateri is already falling back. He's lost a few camels. Uh, Egypt's lost one or two himself. But it looks like there's going to be just a bit of a skirmish phase to start off with. Egypt seems to be taking quite a bit of a defensive uh, way in like how they're going to fight it out here. I mean, both Nabateri and Egypt seem to be quite happy just to have the cavalry fight first and then go for an infantry clash. I mean, we'll have a quick look at what Egypt's brought. He looks like he's brought a lot of thorax. He's brought some Galatian swords. We've got Royal Peltas to make up like the reserve, and we've got some Mercenary Cretans and some Pikes on the flank to keep an eye there. So that's a nice flank uh, protection there due to the cavalry threat on this side. It looks like we're going to have another charge, well not charge, but sally forward of the uh, cavalry, or the camelry I should say. And uh, they're just firing off into the distance at the Egyptian counterparts. And there's a few camels dropping. And the camels are making their weird noises. And they're just going to carry on firing like that, it would seem. Um, I mean, it looks like Egypt's actually going to fall back. I don't know whether... Uh, no, it's not even got a push here from Nabatea. Nabatea, on the other hand, has brought Rakim Guard. Um, Axe Warriors, he's brought uh, a lot of archers. He's brought heavy Nabatea and heavy archers. And he's brought some Thorax Pikes and some Noble Swords. And um, the rules were you can only bring about five of any unit. So you could bring... That's not just cavalry. That is, you can only bring five of one cavalry unit, five of another. Obviously, that is very... Uh, allows people to bring some very interesting setups and that was kind of the idea it was to see if people could, would bring like normal stuff or would bring kind of very wacky and different sort of uh, army rosters and it also um yeah i mean obviously some people that brought like more wacky uh, rosters sometimes got punished or sometimes it really put played off for them like there was a few times where people brought all horse archers and it played off and then sometimes they didn't and it uh and they failed and died but so it looks like a this is the... I don't know what's really happening here. It looks like the camel's getting ready. I'm going to just fast forward a little bit. Maybe just for the benefit of the uh, video. We don't want to like just be watching as like this little skirmish phase happens. It looks like the camels are just carrying on their skirmish phase at this moment. The photonic cav just getting caught out. And here we go. The cataphracts going in. So we're going to have the first bit of clash of cavalry. It's going to be the uh, Hellenic cataphracts and the photonic cavalry going in. It looks like the other photonic cavalry is coming close. We might have the... Nabatea in general coming up, which is a bit of a risk for him. Coming up, but here he comes, possibly. Oh, Egypt sees a chance, and he's going to go for it. And he has caught a couple of them, but not too many. But then he goes in for the camels, and he gets those camels unaware. So that's a really big win there. He gets one of the camels off the battlefield. They will easily destroy these guys. And the uh, Desert Cataphracts came out worse against the uh, Ptolemaic Cavalry, probably due to the Mercenary Cretan Archer support here. And it looks like Nabate is going to lose his cavalry fight as it currently stands. You can see Camel Archer uh, dying in the background there. And we've got some cavalry 
Um, just basically just mopping up at the moment. The general is still holding his own. He's a melee cav fighting against shock, so he should do okay. And then we got the uh, camel archers. Some of them have rallied, and they are now firing on these guys. And they finally actually broke some of the Egyptian camels as well. They might need to get the uh, chariot up here, and it is now moving. Get the chariot up here, and he could possibly run down some of these archers or the cavalry itself. Be interesting to see what he does with them. I mean, they are now very uh, separated, these archers, from the main army. So this is definitely a very easy target to go after if you're Nabatea. The main army for Nabatea is also now moving forward. And you can see Egypt is in full retreat, trying to get his cavalry back. And he's actually sending his archers up still to, like, be aggressive. I mean, these guys have got, certainly can fire quicker and more effectively than Nabatea. But they're also at risk of being just run down. And here comes the Photonic Cav. It's going to try and stop a charge here by the camels. But it's not enough. And the camels go in. And they're taking out some of these archers. And they may do the job here. They are now losing decisively. And here comes the uh, chariot. Is that going to be able to do any damage? You do hope it can. And here it comes. The chariot. I mean, the Photonic Cav is going to try and stop it. And yeah, I mean, the chariot's kind of just stopped in like midair there almost. And they're getting chopped down. This is not a good sign. This is a very expensive unit as chariots. I mean, they're doing some damage, but not really enough. And the uh, archer's going to get out of there in time, it looks like. And this Ptolemaic Cavs just... I mean, it's losing decisively, apparently. But, I mean, these uh, chariots are uh, not looking so hot. I mean, they've actually only lost one. They lost one initially on charge, and then the rest of them are going to get out pretty... Pretty okay, actually. That's kind of surprising. I thought they were going to die, to be honest, quite quickly. Um, but that seems like the first sort of phase of, like... Uh, fighting over. Maybe this camel is going to go in for a charge, possibly, on one of these ca um, one of these archers. The first one... Oh, no. They are not getting in there. So, I don't know really who's come out on top there. I'd say possibly Egypt. Because, um, well, Nabate has lost a lot more um, camels. He's gotten on left. He's also lost all his cavalry, while Egypt has a tiny little bit left. It may come down to uh, infantry here. And who's going to win this fight? I mean, we've got Glacian Swords in the first line. They'll do okay. But, um... We'll have, a, have to have a look. I mean, I, also, it was only 16,000 in funds. Um, I should really have gone through the rules, but there was a, those are a lot of rules. But 16,000 in funds. Um, so you can't obviously spam out really good armies. So you can only bring a few of elite units. So like that side chariot, for instance, very expensive um, to bring for a 16,000 budget. And they've lost three now. I didn't even realize. And yeah, they're making some sort of V-shape. Inverted V are the uh, Egyptians. And it looks like the chariot's going to go through. Oh, it's got Jowie down to, like, death. Wow, one left. That chariot is not pulled off today. And it's going to get through, but, I mean, it's going to get just charged yet. Yeah, just chopped down by uh, Javis. And Nabate is in for a rough uh, time here, it would seem. But here we go. We're going to see Javis. I mean, there you go. That Galatian sword's annihilated. So it looks like most of the Galatian's already gone. It's going to be a close one. It's going to be a close one. Nabate is... Uh, Taking names now for Egypt. He's making Egypt be punished. I mean, these uh, Thorax swords are pretty good, though. They're probably better than any of these uh, Nabataean axe swords, but they're actually a they're silver chevron, though. So they could be quite good. Rakeem Palace Guard, they're pretty elite as well, but their spears will even be able to match up to these, these swords of uh, Egypt. Who knows? Nabataean heavy archers. Getting ready. I mean, they're a bit close to the, the front line of these archers. They need to be careful. Here we go. Axe Warriors going in. All the Javis being thrown at them by these Thorax. And I don't know how well they'll hold, actually. These uh, Axe Warriors are pretty good. Like I said, they're good in, like, their axe is obviously good shock. They combat even currently. I mean, this unit is losing decisively, apparently. They're going to have to send in some more elite stuff soon. And if they can catch these pikes out and then get in behind, that'll be really good. And there you go, breaking out of the front line, the thorax, uh, the royal peltas here. That's a big risk. You need to be careful. They might want to send this cav up as well. Get this in behind, threaten this cav, then get in behind here. They can do some hammer and anvil. Might want to start doing, be proactive with that cav because, I mean, Egypt's been proactive with his. He's got his camel archers now flanking. And the thorax pikes now coming up for Nabatea. And they will certainly help in the attack here. They might win this fight here. The Royal Peltas might lose here. Well, they're apparently, uh, well, apparently they were losing here. I oh, know these Royal Peltas here are losing. These guys are only fighting noble swords. So it's kind of surprising. Yeah, these Nabataean Axe Warriors on the flank not doing so well. I think they're probably because of the Camel Warriors. Noble Swords here having a turnaround to come and help fight against these uh, archers. Look at this. It's going to be a 
a V of death here going on with these uh, Egyptian pikes. And these guys are just going to pokey pokey away and kill these guys. It is actually very close, though. I mean, this is. Uh, I mean, these raw peltas are not helping themselves by being chased by uh, noble swords. They're just letting men get chopped down as they run away. And the cavalry over there getting routed by the general. So now the general can get behind. These pikes now trying to chase the general down. That's never going to end well. And this uh, axe warrior here is going to flank the pikes. And that is probably good night Vienna for those pikes. Yeah, losing decisively already. Egyptian pikes, they're not very good at the Egyptian units. Um, the pikes are probably fine, but they're just when they get flanked, like any other pike unit, they don't do so hot. Now the other pike unit coming up is going to try and counter the uh, axe warriors, but that's never going to end well. And these, uh, this general unit here, running down the archers, and this pike unit is desperately trying to, I don't know, reposition. It's just in a very bad position now because it's, this whole area has been flanked by uh, axe warriors. And these axe warriors are catching out these uh, pikemen before they can form up. And that is not going to end well for them. And now the general can charge into the back of the uh, Egyptian general, who is a royal peltast. And uh, that is ended in about a couple, about 10 or so men being killed. And now the general is also being harassed by Thorax pikes. They really need to route the pike unit for Nabatea. He's in a pretty bad spot, actually. He's been flanked by Thorax swords. They need to be, just be a little bit more aggressive here. Does it Egypt? And he could probably route this unit because he's going to route these, uh, these swords here. And he should win in this fight here. He can still reclaim the right. The left may be in a bit of a trouble. The pikes certainly are looking a bit um, dodgy here. But this general is uh, certainly doing a lot of damage here. Let's see how many kills he's on. 76. That could certainly go up as well. He could rack up more. The camels now on the back lines doing damage to the Nabataean archers as well. Doing some really good damage there. These ones, these Nabataean archers are desperately running away. The axe is here. They need to get moving. They need to come and help route these uh, pikes. Probably doing a little bit of damage to these, uh, the general here of Nabatea. Pikes and Cav don't mix. And these Thorax swords being surrounded and killed off. And the pikes are now winning. Or oh, they've uh, sort of got themselves out of the position here that they were in. And looks like the Thorax swords are trying to pull back. I don't know where they're expecting to go. The right is now almost lost for Egypt. Um, he seemed to have a bit of a route and it just seemed to spread. We'll put it like that, and um, we might win on this left side actually now, which is kind of surprising. Just wherever the general is, um, for Nabate is a really good. I mean, they just need to eliminate this uh, camel unit to Nabate, and they've probably won the battle because they have all the cavalry then. And there you go, it's routing. Camels don't like being chased down, it seems, by some archers. Camels do very well against cavalry though, they scare horses, so they do a morale damage to horses. But I guess the well. They're a medium missile unit, so it's never going to end well. You usually better get in, like, melee uh, camel units to do that sort of thing. Do the damage against the horses. General here, he's still alive, but he's been attacked in the rear. And it looks like Egypt is about to lose. Uh, might have a chain route. Though Nabatea is also a lot of or having a lot of units wavering here. His pikes are uh, returning for Egypt. He might want to send them back into the fray. And there he pops up a rally, and there we go. A costly victory. For Nabatea. So well done to uh, Mr. BLB. BLB, BLB. Uh, oh, you can see it. a lot of BLBs against Fireball. Um, both players, excellent players. And uh, it was a really close battle in the end. Fireball just uh, being pipped. I don't think he did too much wrong. Um, I think it, just in the end of the day, he just kind of lost that. If he'd taken out that general early on, I think he might have done okay. His um, cavalry just was so beaten up. You need to get his camel archers to focus down the Nabataean. Noble Cavalry, keep harassing that, go Cavalry to Cavalry, and then after that, just uh, try and take him out with some archers or something like that, I don't know, and possibly that would have been enough, um, because everything else he was doing fine, he was going to win the infantry fight, I think, but that Cavalry just getting in behind just did a lot of flanking, but there are the results, um, if you want to have a look at them, and we'll move on to the second battle. Hey, and we are back, we're here with the second battle, and this is between Epirus and Carthage, this is a round three uh, battle, I believe. So this is between two excellent players again. It's another close one. Um, and yeah, I believe it's between RK Eli, Eli Shah and I can't remember who the other players of the top of my head. I do apologize. Um, we'll see at the end anyway who, who the two players were. But um, yeah, so we have um, Epirus coming up here being very aggressive. We've got a very heavy um, 
infantry line here with Mercy Salmonite Warriors. We have uh, Mercy Etruscan Warriors in oh, hot plates in the middle. And we have a big flanking force here. We have Illyrian Levies. So some pretty crappy infantry here. But they're supported with some cavalry, some Aspis Companion cavalry. Some of the best cavalry in the game. Going up against some, um, we have some Mercy Scutiari and some Noble cavalry. So some strong cavalry on both sides. What's breaking here? We have some Mercy Italian swords already breaking for Epirus. Not a good sign there. And we have Mercy Samonite Warriors on this side as well. It's the Battle of the Samonite Warriors, it would seem. Um, and then they, uh, there they are going off. Mercy Noble Fighters going in there as well. And, uh, oh well, it looks like it's going to be a Battle of the Mercenaries here a bit, isn't it? I mean, Epirus and Carthage, both two heavily uh, mercenary armies, really. They don't do, have much like in the way of core infantry. We've got some Mercenary and Samonite Warriors here against some Royal Peltasts. Kind of being flanked there with those Royal Peltasts. They need to be careful about that. And now we've got some uh, Etruscan Hotpikes coming to support. Pikes on the flank. I would have had them in the center personally. And they're going to face off against some Carthaginian Hotpikes by the looks of it. With some Illyrian Levies to support them. And more cavalry on this side with Aspis Companion and the Salian Cav. So it like, looks like a lot of money has gone into this Epirus Cavalry. And the infantry is kind of just there to hold the line for a while. The Scutiari Cav is losing. The Carthaginian Hotpikes are... Holding the ground though, and they're probably reason why like these cavalry is getting pretty beaten up for uh, Epirus. He needs to kind of get that out of there and probably do a recharge. This has got a levies in there now, but they won't really beat the Carthaginian hot plates. They're not really good enough. And now you can see here we've got Carthaginians flanking around. We've got some char uh, we've got a charge there from the Aspis companion cavalry into this mercenary Salmonite warriors. And well, the flanks are kind of gone for uh, Epirus. I mean, certainly this flank is looking a bit. On the uh, rough side. The left side is kind of holding okay. We've got cavalry though in the back lines are just getting isolated. And this uh, being 2v1 here. There's a sailing cavalry, shock cavalry as well. Against two shock cavalry. So I mean, that's not that bad. But I mean, it's 2v1. So that is bad. The shock versus shock is not a bad thing. But when it's two shock versus one shock, it doesn't end very well. And now we've got late living hot plights coming over. And here we go. Aspis companion cav now out of this. It really needs to get out and he needs to start surrounding, maybe taking out these archers and then helping in the front line. We also have uh, Samonite Warriors here, losing to Royal Peltas. These Royal Peltas could be the reason, uh, well, could really help Epirus here. And it looks like a little flank here happened with some Samonite Warriors of their own. They need to get them into the battle. The flank is being won over here as well. The pikes charging into these uh, Carthaginian hot plates. That's always going to help. And with the flank of the light uh, infantry, of, like the Illyrian levies, they're really going to help. And you can see here these mercenaries. Yeah, I can say the infantry fight has been won quite well here by Epirus. He's not done so well with his cavalry. But um, that's kind of to be, I guess, expected when he kind of isolates it like he did. You can see here this uh, infantry fight is going on quite, quite nicely. And yeah, this whole left flank is now able to come around to bear and basically envelop this uh, infantry line here but they need to be careful because there's cavalry left noble cavalry these guys could do some nasty work to these living levies they'll probably route them instantly and the pikes need to be careful i mean especially can't allow units like this the samonite warrior you just get like shot at point blank range by bail eric's thing is but they're javying back now which i'm sure will help general over here also being a uh, well focused down a little bit he needs to be careful get this Asp aspis companion cab to run down some slingers certainly is a good idea here we go, this unit is now being surrounded, these noble fighters. They'll die a nice quick death. But this cavalry needs to get out of here, it needs to be mobile as much as possible. This levy pike unit, I didn't even realize they would run on this side, just got routed. Now this Lyrian levy is chasing down stuff and that's... Uh, I don't know if I'll end that well. There you go, the Aspis Companion Cavalry finally going after some of these archers. They really need to use that to just uh, greatest effects as possible. Looks like the cavalry for Carthage over here is going to uh, win the day. And now we've got the General's Bodyguard and some Noble Cavalry. That's all that's left for Carthage's cavalry contingent. But it does look like Carthage is probably going to claim this uh, lose today, sorry. Unless he can pull something out of the bag. He's going to have to take out a General soon. Oh no, general is dead for Epirus. I didn't even realise. It is annoying when these uh, when doesn't like say, oh, enemy general has fallen, but he has actually died, uh, which is kind of no surprise. He's down to very is a very weakened unit. He's been in combat a long time. But I mean, these uh, 
Royal Peltas. I mean, clearly Epirus is not really mind. Uh, like, his units just do not mind. They're not really rousing. There's a few rousing, but they're pretty battered up. And here we go. As fast as Companion Cavalry winning that fight against Noble Cavalry, apparently. And you can see, it's coming down to the last few units. Good charge here from the Noble Cav. Into the back of these Mercy Samonite Warriors. If they can keep doing that, they could certainly route some of these units. Is their general still alive? I'm going to say yes, he is. General nearby. Yep, he's very much alive. There you go, though. They've routed another unit. Mercy Noble Fighters, they're off the map. These two units now are free to go and either envelop over here. Uh, the infantry that's left or to... Well, there's not much they can do. They've not got any cavalry left, which can be an issue when it comes to chasing down these uh, this cav and this, uh, these archers. The Illyrian Levy's got no chance against this hot, uh, hot plate unit. Oh, but he's, he's got a kill there. We'll take that. He'll take that. Man with literally like a loincloth. Oh, he's got another one, I think. He's taking names, this guy. They really need to get up and try and envelop these units. And the general there is, uh, did a charge. I don't know if that ended very nicely. And here we go. The Noble Cavs coming back in. He's charging to the back of its own unit, though. That's not a good idea. You want to surround this unit, not just come in from the same side. So the Illyrian Levies is now wavering and it's going to go. And the Illyrian Levy might catch this calf. It has caught this calf. Needs to be careful. It keeps running in this direction. It's keep making beelines past uh, infantry. And there you go. I mean, this calf is just getting like, destroyed. It's down to 12 units. Carthage in hot play. I mean, it's going to be close, but I think Carthage is going to be a pip to the post here. Especially when Pikes are still in the game. Oh, that cavalry into the side of the Pikes, so that will help. The cavalry is still... Uh, the Pikes are quite happy with that, though. The general there is now surrounded. And this is going to be the fall of Carthage. He fought hard and fought valiantly, but it's just not quite enough. And there we go. That's Carthage's general gone. And those two units are now breaking. And a costly enemy victory indeed. Uh, sadly for Carthage, it just wasn't quite enough. So yeah, RTK Elisha, Elisha fighting as Carthage against Heroes of the Greeks, who was playing as Epirus. So well done to both of them. Um, well, there are the results. I mean, let's just have a quick look at some of them. I mean, looks like his Carthage and Hoplite did well. His, um, Slingers did excellent for Carthage as well. And his cavalry did pretty well. Aspis Companion also doing well, 169. So they did very well. If you want to have a look at the rest of the results, there they are. But we will now move on to the third battle. So we're here with the third battle. And it looks like the Gauls have turned up today to fight in this tournament. And we have the Arverni today fighting against the Seleucids in this uh, third match. And this is an excellent one as well. Um, we have a very, very close one. And again, I'm pretty sure Heroes of the Greeks is in this one again, sadly. Um, but we do have another. He just fight a different opponent this time. Obviously, so give them some glory. But, I mean, I think... Uh, well, we've got a charge going off here. I don't think. I know there's a charge going off here. And there's a heavy horse game, uh, fighting some Gemma Cavalry. The melee Cavalry fighting against Shock Cavalry. And, uh, I mean, initially they got the really good charge of the Gemma Cav. But will the uh, heavy horse be able to turn this around now and prolong melee? And they have some uh, Levy's Freeman in here. I mean, that could also be pretty useful. Heavy horse here fighting against more Gemma Cavalry. Will it be the same outcome? Who knows? We've got some uh, light cavalry here also fighting. It's that saluting to Celtic Warriors. And we have some scythe chariots going through there just taking names of the Zoe Swan. They haven't actually killed that many yet. Um, they are starting to drop now, I think. A good use of uh, chariots. And it's going into the next unit as well. Let's just send the infantry and come and help, like, or finish these guys off. Basically, the Zoe Swan is uh, doing a really, really um, poor job of taking out this uh, side chariots. And there go a couple, though. I think they're down to actually friendly fire. The infantry, main infantry line is now engaging and we have a lot of uh, Chosen Swords going up against, I presume, Thorax Swords. Chosen Swords are beating these Thorax Swords. And on this flank we do also have, again, again oh no, we have Azat Knights on this side. And they're facing off some Heavy Horse and some Light Horse. And his Levy Freeman need to be careful. They could get into a nasty charge. 
Also, there, I mean, this is the Celtic Warriors. They're actually fighting against uh, Thoros Spears. The triple silver chevrons. These guys are uh, nasty. Here we go. As at Knights charging in. They're going to be the next wave going in as well. These guys are more melee cav. Uh, so they will do okay in combat. Fighting against uh, the Heavy Horse and the Levy Freeman. But they can't be left uh, on... Uh, well, left just on their own for too long. Because the Spears will certainly do some damage. Even if it's Levies. Uh, as I overshoot this one. Looks like... I'm going to say the Agama Cap did okay. It won this fight probably. But... It decided the best pull out probably was General Hair getting absolutely pinned down. You need to be really, really careful. Don't want to stay in combat for too long here. Um, on this side, it looks like the side chariots are basically gone. I can't see them. Oh, they're maybe there. No, that's the Azat Knights. Yeah, I think the side chariots are all dead. And um, the other one's kind of dealt with them. They're actually now routing these Thoros spears. They need to be careful, though, um, with their general because they could leave him open to being shot by archers. We do have uh, some infantry fighting going on down here as well. At the moment, I'm going to say that it probably... and uh, I've just seen like a ping come up. So I think, yeah, it does look like the general force loses is dead. He's recently just died. So that is huge. So that's going to certainly do a lot of damage to the Seleucid morale. I was just about to say, I think Seleucid is probably going to lose this. He was looking like he was winning the cab fight. And looked like he was going to continue to do so. But then his generals just died. Um, so that could make a big difference. Thorax Swords I thought would do a lot better against Chosen Swords. But it seems like they just... I mean they're winning on this one. But in some other areas they are not winning. They're having a really rough time. There is one for instance. Um, these guys are not doing so well. They're very temperamental. I think they do well in some areas. And then they just all of a sudden... Nope that's it. They just go and die in another area. But this is a long line of infantry going on. And now they can flank him behind. Which is what I certainly do with these Celtic Warriors. I get him behind. I mean, they already have with these Oathsworn. And now they can carry on and do that along the line. Don't even need to worry about this, uh, ar these archers, really. They've got some cavalry of their own. Just run them down. They do need to be careful of this cavalry, though. I mean, they also need to protect their own general. Just to make sure he, uh, they don't end up, end up like the Seleucids. Without a general. Here comes some uh, Celtic Warriors to just save their general who's being charged in the back by some Gamma Cav. Who are desperately trying to kill that general off and damage the morale of the Arverni as well. But the Arverni said no and they've shut the door on it and they've slammed in some uh, Celtic Warriors to keep them out. And it looks like, I mean, they're just trading units at the moment. There seems to be a lot of uh, wavering from both sides. These Celtic Warriors are going to probably break, I mean, these uh, Oath one probably are going to break through here. And the center's basically gone. It's just this cavalry that just keeps harassing. If they can pin this cavalry down, then they'll do just fine. Here comes the Celtic Warriors. They're going to do just that. They're going to get charged by the Azat Knights first. And they'll do some damage. Azat Knights are the very eastern look to them. They do look good. And they have their Agema Cav with a very Hellenic look. Excellent. Do love the Sluices with their mix of Asian and sort of Greek units. Same as the Bactrians, really, and uh, sort of the Egyptians as well, but they've more Egypt got more Egyptian units and then and Hellenic units. But that kind of looks like it. it. Looks like the Sluices are probably going to rout anytime soon. It's just a mo matter of time until these units just get surrounded fully and killed off. How this Thoric Sword unit here is still winning, I have no idea. This unit has been—it's just gone combat even now, but it was winning. It's been in like. A really tough fight against those swarm most of this battle. And it was winning. So is how like random they are. Sometimes they just pull out the bag and do well. But there you go. That looks like it's gonna be the end of the battle. Cavalry charging into these archers. They're gonna rout them. Oh, that's pretty nasty. And these Levy Freeman will just mop these guys up. And there we go. That is the battle. There is the third battle. Across the enemy victory again for the Seleucids. Uh, so that was Flame who was playing in that one against Heroes. Um, I did forget to mention that Heroes is a YouTuber. I'll leave his link in the description if you want to have a look at that. Um, look at his channel. Um, he does some really good campaigns on there. Definitely worth ch uh, checking out. But he did win this one against Flame who fought very hard as well. Um, he was very unlucky. I think he could have won the cavalry fight. Um, if he hadn't got his general isolated, I think he would have been just fine. Uh, and his chariot did okay, 139. If he'd possibly gone after some uh, weaker units, he could have probably racked up kills. Like, gone after these uh, Celtic Warriors and Levy Freeman, he would have racked up some kills. 
Um, but yeah, there are the end results if you want to have a look at them. Uh, I've one unit I will pick out is these Celtic Warriors. They've got 232 kills, which is really good. They are on uh, six, like chevrons so that's very useful uh, so here we go we are on to the fourth battle and this one is the final as i mentioned and it's between Masesli and our uh, armenia i was about to say our Ar Ar again but we've no we've just had them um in this one we do have uh Premsil, and we also have heroes of the greeks who did get to the final he got a long way took out a lot of uh players and well as did Premsil, and uh this one is an excellent battle as well uh, two great players. Play with two interesting armies. Certainly, Mercedesley has the stronger infantry with the Desert Cohort and the Desert Legionnaires here. And, well, Army certainly has the better cavalry, I'd say, with uh, Mercy Cappadocians. He's got Noble Horse Archers. He's also got Cataphracts, which are very nice. Um, only going up against Armour Numidian Riders and uh, Desert Legion Cavalry. So, it'll be interesting to see who can win. If the cavalry can come out on top and then support the infantry for Armenia, or whether it'll be the other way around, and it'll be Marseille's infantry that will win the fight against the Armenian infantry and then beat the Armenian Cav. We'll have to see, but it does look like it's ever so slightly in favour of Hera's uh, army to start with, but we'll see who wins this. It does look like there's going to be a lot of aggressive play being done by Marseille here. As uh, Heroes is, not Heroes, um, Premsil is pulling back with his Noble Horse Archers. You mean Light Infantry coming up? This unit is just here to qu quickly try and catch up with Cavalry. What we've got on the flanks here, we've got some Cartley Axemen, they're pretty solid. They will do well against uh, probably quite a few of these units. And we've got some Armored Numidian Spears here. Here we go, the first sort of infantry clash looks like it's about to be underway. There we go, there's one. New million light infantry up against Cartley Axman. I'm going to say the Cartley Axman are probably going to win this. Yeah, you can see winning decisively already. They're, it's not an even fight, really, that. Mercury Cappadocian Cav fighting off against Desert Legionary Cav. Instantly not looking too good there. Cavalry here tries to charge into the back of his own men. That's not a good idea. He's probably going to get that around. Probably going to help against these Eastern Cataphracts. So now charging into Desert Legionnaires. Good volley off there by the J Javis. Getting quite a few kills, about 12 or so kills there. Hopefully a lot of these Desert Cohort will get up, or Desert Legionnaires will get up. You can stab some of them as they run away. They need to throw another volley, really. These uh, Eastern Cataphracts are nasty. On the other side, not much is engaged here. This left flank's being pretty docile to start with. And there's another volley, killing off a few more of these Eastern Cataphracts. They're down to 50 men already. It's a very good volley there. Now they're flanking into the back of these Cartley Axemen. And that will certainly help in the... Hel help in the uh, Fight on this right flank, if we call it like that, or Armenia's left. Yeah, these Cartley Axemen are now locked in combat here against the Desert Cohort. Or oh, these these might be the Desert Legionnaires. Yeah, they look basically the same. But there's going to be a nasty charge here by the Cataphrax. Probably what Armenia wanted. And there you go. Oh, sandwich between infantry and cavalry. That Legionnaire unit is not looking so great. They need to get more cavalry up here to... Uh, Massively to try and help support this right flank, but they also need to worry about this flank as well. There's plenty of cavalry here. This noble horse arch unit, very useful in melee and just shooting like this. I mean, they've done some damage, but mainly just in like HP more than uh, numbers. But here we go. Here's gonna be another charge. This left side starting to get some action now. And we've got desert cohort. Oh, these more desert legionnaires. No, this is desert cohort. They look literally the same. There's no differentiation between the two units, which is a bit annoying. But this cohort unit is the better one. It's better than Legionnaires. Um, they should probably rinse through these Cartley Axemen. You do expect. But, I mean, they got support from these uh, Slingers here. So that will certainly help. And we now have a charge down the center. We've got some uh, Mercy Cappadocians. We've got some more Cataphracts here going off after the uh, Slingers. They will definitely kill these Slingers very easily. Poor Slingers facing off against Cataphracts. And the Cataphracts are in behind the enemy lines now. The general over here just kind of getting focused on it. I presume he was going to charge these guys. But he's just jabbing them. I mean, he's doing a lot of damage because Javis will do more damage than, uh, like, arrows. But, I mean, it's not going to have you break this unit. You want to really charge. I mean, because you're also getting shot in the flank. And you could also just go in and charge some of these uh, Carly Axemen because you really need to get some more carrying to help in your infantry. But here we go. We've got another charge here. We've got uh, armored Numidian Riders coming in. They're fighting off these uh, Eastern Cataphracts. Now you want to try and get this Desert Legion in behind to surround. And they're losing decisively. And there we go. This Desert Legionary is going after the Cataphrax. And they got the better charge, I say, with the Legionary Cav. And then melee against uh, Shock. But, I mean, this is super heavy against Medium. 
Like, if I think if it was heavy, or maybe they might have stood a chance, but this is just medium. This, uh, Legion Cav, I mean, they kind of just look like Egyptians, really. They kind of just, like, they've got, like, Egyptian, like, headwear, and they've got some sort of, like, chainmail, but they they really don't look like Legion Cavalry, like, of the, uh, Roman army, we'll put it like that. But the center looks like the uh, infantry they're going to win here. He's, uh, Carly Axman just getting absolutely destroyed. But they're kind of blobbing up a bit. They just need to kind of stick together. Well, not stick together too much for the, uh, because that's blobbing up. But they uh, are making it easy for the archers to get some easy kills. They just need to hope that some of these cavalry un units run out of ammo soon. Carly Axman going in here to help against the Legion Cavalry. We'll see who... Well, I mean, now that's probably an, e an easy victory because there's infantry support here. They need to get some of their own infantry over here. They are just doing that now. Desert Cohort coming in desperately. They're going to throw Javis. Possibly. Who knows? No. It just seems like it'll be a no there. And here comes some more armored Numidian Riders. They uh, clearly beat their opponents, the Merc Mercury Cappadocians. There's heavy shock here. They would have had a good chance against uh, Eastern Cataphract, who are now losing decisively. This right flank is nearly uh, over. I mean, there's just a tiny unit of Desert Legionnaires firing off some Cartley Axemen. That shouldn't be a, too much of difficult for the Cartley Axemen. And these light infantry, they've caught with the uh, Slingers over here, but they're so low in troops that I don't think they're going to have a chance. These uh, cohort need to go up here and help for the fight, really. And now it looks like the Armenian general is being mobilized. And the balance power has shifted in favor of Armenia. And they are slowly flanking here. They probably want to stretch this unit out a bit more to try and flank a bit more. Carly Axman are losing here, but there's a charge from the general into the side of these cohorts. Or legionnaires, whichever one. But yeah, there you go. They're charging in. And they'll get some good kills there, you imagine. How did they do there? I mean, they got like 20 odd kills. That's not bad. And then they're now going to get a volley from the slingers. And they're down to another 10 or so there. Noble horse archers, they. I think they've been in a combat. And they do it did okay. I mean, you can see here. Got a desert cohort. They've nearly killed this unit. But they're having to, like, spread out because they're getting focused down by uh, cavalry. And over here, this final unit of cavalry for Numidia is, uh, well, being just surrounded and executed, basically. They did a, They fought hard, but, I mean, there's just. No way out of this. Yeah, and these, I mean, I'm surprised they're as fresh as they are. They still got like, had like 50 men. I mean, they're now getting focused down, but the fight against infantry and uh, Cataphrax, it's a deadly combo. And it, the General 4 Numidia is also now dead, I've just realized. He is, uh, I think he died over here. He got isolated and uh, killed off by some Cataphrax and I think some horse archers. I think it was one of these horse archers he was fighting against. Yeah, these cohorts now and these legionnaires kind of got to chase around, try and catch some of these units. They might get the infantry, but they might not, they're not going to get the cavalry. And uh, the mass amount of cavalry by Armenia is actually going to pay off for him. And there you go. These poor cohorts now are just uh, having to basically... It's like carry hair, but for the Numidians. And they're getting focused down. So just fast forward a little bit. I mean, Carly Axman here. They're actually going to win that fight of the uh, Legionnaires, but they're losing a lot of men from other archers. And I mean, we, here we go. We're going to have a charge in from the Cataphrax. I mean, into this Legionnaire unit. And yeah, I mean, they're, they're, they're kind of dead. These guys are just tanks of the ancient world of Cataphrax. They literally are a tank. And it's going to go into the next one now. So let's follow them. They're going to actually chase down a running unit. Oh, no. They're going to go... What are they going after now? Who knows? I mean, they're dead. Like, all these units are tied. Actually, they did have some cavalry left. Oh, no. This is spears. I thought this was cavalry. I was like, wow. How do these guys survive? And a good javy throw there. Getting some good kills on these cataphracts. But it's not going to save the spears who are now routing. And they're probably the cav can get out of there in time just before the infantry arrives. And we're going to have some cataphracts. This is the final unit. Cataphrax is going to charge into the back of these desert cohort. And there we go. A brutal ending to a, a, a good fight there by the Numidian player. 
So it's a costly victory for Armenia. So well done to Premsil, who was playing as Armenia, against Heroes of the Greeks, who's playing as um, Essaisley. There are the end results. I mean, the Royal Carfrax there for the general getting 139 kills. Another one getting 195. And uh, is Carly Axman getting 224, which is not bad at all. Um, and then there's a 213 for Desert Cohort and 178. But I mean, much of the rest did not do so great uh, for Mercedes Lee. But um, congratulations to Prem still. Um, he's got his reward. He's now a Swiss Guard. He's now within the Swiss Guard ranks, an elite group of uh, great Total War fighters. And I hope you guys enjoyed watching the video. If you did, do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here, and leave a comment to show your support. And if you want to join some future tournaments, then join the Discord. The link is in the description down below. And uh, great to see some of you guys in the next tournament. And until next time, bye.